Thank you for embarking on this journey with us today. What do we want to find out in this gathering? Where do we stand? How do we share ideas of what we are doing? How do we move forward? How can we truly be inclusive in, in this day and age of technology? Are we ready? Are you ready? We're ready. So there's two classical ways of thinking about stability. So the first one is the medical model, right? This is the something's broken, let's fix it, right? You break your arm, you get a cast, hopefully it heals, arm works again, that sort of thing, right? All right, now that's fine, except that what happens when it's not able to be fixed? What happens when um, the, that, that uh, consequence of a disability stays? In, a, in the medical model, we then put the burden on the individual. We refer to the individual as being disabled, as having a disability, right? As having that impairment. So I want to contrast this with the social model of accessibility, of, of disability, right? Which informs us that it's the environment that is disabling, not the individual that is disabled. So first, just talking about the relational, when I talk about the relational, what does that mean? I am talking about how we build relationships with the communities that we are invested in engaging and saying we want to come into our space and welcome. I don't believe in the universal, because oftentimes universal still continues to be charted and created by non-disabled folk. So how universal is it actually going to be? So what I said was one plus one plus one plus one into infinity, thinking of it as cumulative, not as individual. That every time you build a moment with each individual to engage them and you are in a relational space and in the truth of that and you build access, you will not just build access with them, you will build for the next person and the next person will offer the moment for the next person. When I think about language, again, I always say that the person who has the lived experience gets to identify with whichever language they choose to, um, and, and, and nobody has the right to take that away from them. Everybody's just doing their best to be as respectful as they can in, in every moment. Maybe just, you know, learn our names and identify us as, as who we are by name instead of as a, as a larger label, maybe. I'm reminded again of thinking that um, the act of being presence can be a privilege for bodies that may not, uh, for various reasons, exist and connect always. And so I recognize that part of the beauty of beauty and the beast of my life and the way of working is to affirm the fact that even though now I'm in Vancouver and I'm in wherever I am <laughs> when I'm traveling and Paul is there, that, that the work is our point of synergy, and it's a way of connecting, and we just keep building. 100% of the web starts off 100% accessible. You know why? Because it was designed that way. What happens is we come along and we say, oh, there's this thing, and I want to make it look like this other thing, and I'm going to use you know, the, the wrong tag here, or I'm going to style something to look like a button, even though it's not actually a button, and that's where we get into problems. Attitudes come in two different parts. We need to shift our attitude as a culture. We need to shift our attitude as a society. Sometimes back because of colonization. Colonization shifted attitudes so drastically. You had cultures that did not view disability as a disability. And that's a whole different conversation. We need to shift our attitudes around disability, but we also, we need to start putting people in power from the start. What I'm thinking about is how do we equivalent um, the translation between spoken English and American Sign Language. So ASL integration is not possible because you're not ASL signers, so I can't equate uh, a translation for English and ASL. When we hire interpreters, we hire it for access, and we don't hire it always for language. The same as when we hire French interpreters. They're there to interpret, but they don't culturally broker. Uh, it seems like the systems are just sitting there waiting to be used. 
We have spaces that work. We have people ready to use them. And I think it was something that Adam sort of touched on instead of uh, the barrier of waiting until everybody's ready or properly trained, like, let's just do it. Guess what's gonna happen? People are gonna be trained and the audiences are gonna learn and everybody's gonna grow together. Also, the theater allows us so much magic. I mean, that's the thing about theater is to engage the imagination. So if you think the two people in a wheelchair can't have a sword fight, man, that is my favorite moment that we're gonna have to figure out how to engage the imagination of the audience and all of us at the same time, even though there's not a, a wheelchair sword fight on stage, that's what we're all gonna be thinking of at the same time. So it um, doesn't, matter, doesn't matter what your ability is, come on over and we'll do some theater together. So whether we're talking about a theatrical show or the fireworks or the ghost train or any, any other event or the, the, the pride parade, whatever uh, vocal I might be describing, it also invites us as people who are blind or partially sighted to engage and meet and connect with one another and to do so in, um, in, a, in a way, in the context of a sort of a more sighted world or a more sight-oriented event. And in some ways that's a bit of a, maybe a kind of a transgression, and in other ways it's just so, uh, it, it feels to me so empowering and so connecting. Um, it's really important uh, that we involve people with lived experience. Uh, that, that's probably the term you were looking for, but people with lived experience bring um, an authority to the conversation that is unlike anything else. And uh, how about the, inviting us to the table early? In fact, do we even need an invite? We should by default be there. The, the, the lens of how you look at things, when you invite us to the table, when we're at, at default at the table, then you don't have to catch up. It's built in at the ground level and that's hugely important.